welcome to the Pelican Brief with your host, David Tapman. Welcome to the Pelican Brief. I'm your host, David Tatman. We are here today with Miss Kelly Alford, uh, who is running for House District 64. We're delighted to have her in the studio. Uh, she's been married to Scott Alford for 25 years. She has three adult children and two grandchildren, uh, lived in Watson community inside of Denham Springs for over 20 years. Uh, she's a strong Christian conservative, and Kelly and, Kelly and her husband are also small businessmen, persons. Uh, they own a landscape company and uh, also do uh, property management. So I want to welcome Kelly to the show. Kelly, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, David, for having me. It's well, a pleasure. I, I gave you a brief introduction, but why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe what I didn't hit. Absolutely. Um, as you said, my husband and I have been running our business uh, for a little over 15 years. We run about five crews. We've built our business from the ground up. Um, we, of course, are very organic. Um, uh, we've never really had to advertise. It's been um, word of mouth, Better Business Bureau, um, that type of um, referral system. Um, we, of course, uh, manage search properties as Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's and uh, White Oak Plantation, some of the little uh, gems that we are very proud of. Sure. Um, of course, as you alluded to, um, I am a small business owner, um, but uh, I'm not a career politician. Um, and, uh, so my, that's just basically a little bit about my husband. Yeah, and, I. and I think that's great that we, we need more people, uh, good people who I, I love personally, this is just my uh, take on it. I love, uh, uh, business people because they make payroll, yeah, right? Uh, exactly. they have to serve and they have to set a standard and just by the clients that you named, uh, that that's pretty pristine work that you're having to do. So there's some pretty high standards there. Correct. So, so for our audience that, you know, we have a statewide audience, mm -hmm. so a lot of people don't know every house district. Tell us a little bit about your district, just broadly, what does it encompass geographically? Okay. Um, so we just had the lines redrawn. So I'm going to have to, I had to write this down because it's, it, the district Changed. is a little, yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. So basically uh, the South line is Lockhart, the Mag Lockhart Magnolia Bridge Road. It runs from the Amy River east to the train tracks. Um, it follows the train tracks east to Coyell Creek. Uh, then it, then it's everything north of that up to the parish line. Right. Uh, Watson, Walker North, and North Denham, pretty much. Um, but then it goes into uh, a little into uh, Pride uh, and Pride Port Hudson, which is uh, from Indian Mound and Highway 1064 North, which is the Pride area. The east boundary is Amy River, and the west boundary is Comet River. Um, and then it goes up to the parish line. Um, there's some diversions, so it's not like it's about 98% of the district, um, but it's heavily populated in Watson, Walker, and Denham. Okay. And then, of course, the Pride area is more rural. Sure. So so the, for those who wouldn't know, this is uh, the seat that today is currently held by Representative Valerie Hodges. That is correct. Who is termed out and is running for the Senate seat. Yes, right? correct. Okay. Senate 13. So, that helps people maybe get some perspective yes, of the district and, and uh, where you are. So what made you decide to run for office? Well, um, I've always had, a, a, I guess, a, a little nudge towards government. Um, of course, when I was a little girl growing up, my, uh, I always wanted to be a lawyer. That was kind of my intention. Of course, that didn't happen, and that's all good. I'm very, pr very, very proud of my life. In the direction it went, um, but I just always felt a, a, a call towards government. Um, and of course, prior to uh, the COVID shutdown, um, I was very involved with um, just my area, my community, um, wanting, you know, of course, concerned with the direction of our nation, obviously, um, and then uh, very concerned with the direction of our state. 2020 and the shutdown was a huge push towards it's time. I need to step up. And, uh, um, you know, my husband and I prayed about it, uh, talked to my adult children. Um, obviously, we, you know, brought it to our church fellowship, wanted to seek counsel. Um, but, you know, whenever I got the, I guess I want to say direction or wh where I was going to run, which was for Valerie's seat, 
um, it was a no-brainer for me at that point. Um, you know, I started aligning my life, my job, my, you know, all my responsibilities to be able to run efficiently um, and at 100% because I, I do everything, you know, at 100%. You know, when my husband and I first started our company, um, I was a stay-at-home mom. And, uh, you know, I was raising kids at that time. But I would do our work, um, the bookkeeping side of things and, and, and you know, well, back then we were pen and paper, so we would do that kind of stuff. So, you know, a uh, little dinosaurish, but uh, uh, so I would do that when the kids went to sleep. So when I went to work full time, when they were older, um, uh, you know, I had to I had to create everything. I had to create you know an office. I had to create policy, procedure, employee handbook, um, and like you alluded to with uh, you know getting the Bass Pro Shop contract that elevated us to another level to where, you know, we had to carry certain insurances. Um, and there was a lot of requirements um, from the commercial side of things to be able to even get onto the property and begin to service them. So um, a lot of that kind of stuff I managed, um, you know, the scheduling and, and um, you know, uh, the, the, the book invoicing and, and receiving. I mean, just all of it. I mean, I, I did all of the office operations as well as some of the um, – uh, you know, the day-to-day -day operations. My husband managed mostly the operations with the, with the crews and stuff like that, but I also assisted him in that as well. Sure. So, but it was, you know, 2020 was a huge thing, you know, um, you know, the unconstitutional lockdown, lockdown in my opinion, um, uh, you know, you know, we stepped in, me and some mama bears, you know, we stepped in, we, um, we pushed back, um, we uh, pushed on our uh, elected officials to come and speak to us, and, uh, you know, uh, we did a town hall. Uh, uh, we, we set up a town hall at a certain point and, and, you know, demanded that, you know, come talk to us. The people want to know what's going on. We're confused. There's frustration. People aren't understanding why are we still shut down. Businesses are going under. We lost so many businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, I had several friends that lost their businesses, um, you know, and, and that to me was unacceptable. You know, my daughter uh, was going to LSU at the time when, when COVID started. And, uh, you know, she was a 2020 graduate and my only child to go to college and I never got to see her walk across the stage, mm. you know? So there was just a lot of, uh, uh, mishandling in my opinion of that situation. And it really propelled me to want to step in and serve. Yeah. Well, I, uh, so I always wanted to be a lawyer too. Uh, <laughs> But in the lawmaking process and the legislative process, you really are sort of an unofficial lawyer because you're, <laughs> you're drawing up the laws that, right. that the attorneys have to live by and abide by. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that govern the people, right? Mm -hmm. And um, as far as the whole lockdown thing, I don't, think the, I don't think we've seen the end of that. There appears to be some bubbling up of those issues. So mm -hmm. clearly the, uh, it, it is likely to be something that the legislature uh, would address again mm -hmm. uh, and whoever, generally whoever governor. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever's elected governor. So, um, so let's pretend. I, I like to do this as a part of our show. And maybe it's not pretending. So you just got elected. Mm -hmm. So tonight, you know, last night you were elected. <laughs> what do you want to do? What are your big issues that you want to push? And what are you going to do as a legislator to make this state a better place and to do the kind of things that you talked about wanting to do? Well, just to address what you said uh, regarding um, – the, the, the threat currently, uh, or I should say maybe rumors currently going around regarding a possible uh, second shutdown. You know, aside from an, a catastrophic event, that does not ever need to happen again. It, 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 it destroyed and set us back so many years. Whereas, in my opinion, we were already held back many, many years. Um, you know, infrastructure is a, is a huge thing for me. In regards to that, our infrastructure is way behind versus years ahead. You know, we need uh, innovation. We need, uh, you know, strong uh, conversations and communication in regards to um, preparing for growth. I, I think with some of the influx we got from, say, Katrina or, um, you know, other situations, uh, we weren't prepared for that. You know, infrastructure is a huge thing for me. You know, um, in regards to the COVID, um, 
you know, some bills that didn't get passed last session, I'd like to revisit, you know, like I said, uh, Edmondson uh, HB1, I think it's 182, in regards to not requiring the, uh, the vaccine for children to be able to attend school. You know, Louisiana already has a law where, you know, you're not required to be vaccinated. Right. But a lot of parents, and there, there was another bill in regards to that as well. Um, I don't remember which representative brought it, but a lot of parents don't know that. It's just, here's your paperwork, fill it out, and part of it, I mean, because I remember that with my first child, um, you know, and, and, and show your, 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 you know, your vaccinations, your record, um, and, and you can go to school. A lot of parents don't know that you don't have to do that. So I want to make sure that those are, some of those are, are brought back up. And, of course, there were some other ones that were good that I think we could revisit as well. Um, under a new governor. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, of course, you know, tort reform is another one, you know, as a business owner, uh, those kind of things affect me as well. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm a, uh, I live by balance, you know, I believe, you know, we can have balance in life, you know, it doesn't have to be so far this way or so far that way, you know, we can come to the center and have, you know, fair um, uh, situations or fair, um, uh, circumstances to where somebody can be, you know, um, live and be protected and that kind of thing. And I feel like we've just kind of gone too far to either side. So, um, you know, but tort reform that, that affects us, you know, when we're out on the road and stuff and, and, and operating, um, you know, we, the, the threat of, of being sued, you know, for something that's not, you know, you know, in a situation where it should be a litigation, those kind of things need to be addressed. Um, Obviously, our complicated tax system, we have to look at that. You know, I talked to, uh, I was in Livingston Leadership, uh, which was a program through our chamber, and uh, which is an amazing program. And um, I was talking to one of the representatives at the Capitol one day, and they made the statement they were in a subcommittee in regards to uh, tax reform. And, and they were going around the table with several different uh, you know, representatives, and I think senators were there as well. And, uh, you know, it was just having conversation about some situ you know opportunities to, to to do it and it basically boiled down to well this uh tax will affect this department or this will affect this program uh well let's just revisit it and they just shut it down and in my opinion that's 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 unacceptable i don't want you know i could use a stronger word but i'm gonna leave it at unacceptable um I, some hard decisions are going to have to be made. And that's one of the things that as a business owner, I deal with day in and day out. I have to make hard decisions. You know, I know what it's like to sign a front of a check and not just the back of a check. So, and then of course, to work within a budget um, and with what I have to work with. I don't, you know, in my, in my position, I can't just go try to find, yeah, I can go get a loan or something, but we need to work with what we have and we need to fix what you know is so broken in our state which is our taxes and the idea of you know well let's just put it off because it's just so complicated or it's just going to affect so much we can't do that you know because it'd be one thing if you weren't adding to the problem mm -hmm. you know but that's what they've been continuously doing is adding to the problem without fixing any of it so that i i, I will get with whoever and and you know work up a solution, we got to fix our tax system, you know, or, or we're not gonna have businesses want to come and work in Louisiana. Sure, we're, um, we're either 49th or 50th in everything. Correct. Right? The, and old, the old joke is that we are, everybody in Louisiana is for Puerto Rican statehood so that we, we wouldn't be last. <laughs> um, but it's really, it's really sad, a sad joke, right? Yeah. Um, whatever we're doing is not, it's not working. Yeah. And with the incredible resources that yeah. we have, in the state of Louisiana, particularly in our region, you yeah. know, with the port, with uh, universities, uh, you know, major university systems that are really, you know, centered right here. And yeah. um, it just seems like that there's so much opportunity and we don't take advantage of it. So right. I think you're right. And I, I think it's, you know, I always say that the way that we could fix the state is if everyone ran and said, I don't care if I get reelected, I'm going to do what needs to be done. Amen. And the challenges is that when people's reelection is on the line, sometimes uh, they're not as hard with something. So we'll right. see how that goes. You know, yeah. uh, if we have a new governor, all, all of the gubernatorial, I mean, we're going to have a new yes. governor, but depending on which new governor Correct. we get, um, they're all talking about those things and perhaps uh, they'll have a honeymoon period. Yeah. 
uh, where legislators uh, and the governor usually get a lot done. So it's about getting the right things done. So tell us, uh, I always ask this question because as a, as a recovering politician um, <laughs> and an aging lobbyist, um, you know, I'm always interested in the mechanics of it. So tell us how you are going to win the race. Tell us how you're going to get, you know, either in the runoff or get the most amount of votes. What are you doing uh, to win the race and what's your plan? So really the only challenge that I had with my race was name recognition because Aside from that, I'm not a career politician. I'm, I'm, I'm the only one that's not a career politician. Um, I'm a small business owner. So um, uh, that was my challenge, was name recognition. Um, and so what I'm doing is knocking on doors, um, going to uh, local events with, um, pe you know, con the people in my, my district. Of course, I know a lot of people in my district, outside my district, all around, um, and I'm encouraging them as well to share with their friends and, and, you know, encourage them to come talk to me, get to know me. Obviously, I put my cell phone number out there, um, you know, emails and, and that kind of thing. Um, but right now, it's really been knocking on doors. I mean, we, we are really pounding the pavement right now and, and really started, a, you know, a month ago. Um, and... It's been so exciting because I'm getting such great feedback at the door. You know, I've not had um, anybody tell me no when I've asked, you know, or said I would be honored with your vote. Um, I've had a couple maybes, um, but I've had a very, very good response at the door. Um, we actually also just put out a mailer, um, was my first mailer, um, and very proud of that course I am grassroots um, and as I alluded to before with starting the business and building the business from the ground up I figure things out I, 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 I work I don't wait for somebody to tell me what to do and so um, you know I was very instrumental in that mailer and very proud of it I feel like it's going to be like that that propel with the challenge of being recognized by my name um, but you know, that's the main thing is just talking to people and, and getting out there. Of course, we're going to do some other things um, to, uh, to keep the, you know, the momentum going as well as keeping my name out there. Um, but, I mean, I'm hearing great feedback from the, from the voter as well as uh, local leaders and state leaders. Um, so I'm very, very, um, uh, I, I don't want to say the word hopeful. I, I am confident that I can win. That's awesome. Well, I, I certainly appreciate you offering yourself for public service. Again, working in this arena a long time, we need good people. We have a lot of good people there. Yeah. There are a, a lot of legislators that do really, really great work. A lot of department heads and people who work in the executive branch of government and uh, that really do great work, but we need more of them. And, you know, I always worked really well with Valerie. I thought she did a good job. And so, and I'm, you know, I know that's a, a very tense uh, uh, Senate race and yes. I have two friends in that race. Uh, but, you know, the voters make those decisions. So is there anything else you'd like to tell our audience before we wrap up? Any other points that you would like to make or uh, any closing comments? Well, uh, obviously, Kelly Alford, running for state representative, District 64. Uh, I believe we can do better in our state and uh, change the trajectory of the migration that is leaving our state and turn it around and hopefully bring our people back. Um, you know, I want to see my kids grow here and establish their families and their careers, and I want my grandkids and future generations to do the same. And I feel like we are at a great uh, threshold and a transition for our state to change that direction and go in a good direction from, like you said, the last 49th, 50th up. And, um, you know, I just want to be a part of that and I want to serve. Um, you know, I, I have no desire to make a career out of this. I'm, I'm stepping in because I feel like I can make a difference and, and bring that business tenacity that I've used with our company, building relationships, working with anybody um, to the capital and uh, see some things done for our state, some 
uh, some relief. So our people are hurting, our people are tired, and they're struggling, and they're they're frustrated. And and you know, I believe we can do better. So um, I just am honored to be here. And uh, you know, we have a website uh, www dot vote Kelly Alford dot com okay. and that's K-E-L-L-I-E-A-L-F-O-R-D. Um, and then I have a Facebook page, Vote Alford 64. Uh, and obviously I uh, humbly ask for your support and most importantly your prayers. Well thank you Kelly and we will post all of uh, that information in uh, the link below uh, the podcast, uh, and she's Kelly Alford, and I'm David Tapman. And to follow us, you can follow us on all of the major podcasting platforms at Pelican Brief 225. You can email us at thepelicanbrief225 at gmail.com. If you subscribe, you probably are already listening. If you're seeing this or hearing it, you can subscribe and you can catch all of our upcoming episodes of the podcast as we interview as many of the candidates who are interested in coming on and talking to you about what they're going to do and how they're going to win their campaign. So thank you for tuning in. And that is this episode of the Pelican Brief. The Pelican Brief is an off script production.